Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and today I am super excited to bring you a review of the Artillery Genius 3D printer. Um, I've had this printer for a couple weeks now, and I've done some pretty awesome prints on this machine, I think totaling somewhere between 60 to 80 hours. And uh, yeah, I'm here to share my experience and to see how this machine matches up to its bigger brother, uh, the Sidewinder X1, which has been one of my favorite 3D printers of 2019. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So at first glance, this machine looks a lot like the Sidewinder X1. Um, if I had them side by side, it's it's crazy how much uh, similarities there are between the two machines. And that is a really good thing because the Sidewinder X1 packed a ton of features that for around 400 US dollars, I really couldn't believe it. So let's go over really quickly some of the specs of this machine for those that are curious. So build volume on this machine is 220 by 220 by 250. Uh, it's got the diamond plated glass, which I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite build surfaces to date. Um, it's got really beefy aluminum extrusions. So they're not quite as bulky as the artillery sidewinder, um, but they're still really, really wide extrusions for this form factor when you compare it to other 3D printers that are currently available. Um, so it's got 2040 extrusions for the Z. Um, it's got a 2060 for the X axis, which again is insane. Um, the Y axis has got a 2040, which is not as wide as the uh, Sidewinder X1. That one had a 20 by 60, um, but this bed is again smaller. So it's that's still really, really sufficient from my testing. Um, same exact touchscreen, same inputs. You have the choice between a micro SD card as well as a full size uh, USB drive, which is awesome. Uh, same silent drivers, and I believe it's the same board. I have not ripped up the uh, bottom of the machine, but I believe it's the exact same board that the uh, X1 has. It's got the inductive end stops, which is great, dual lead screws, the exact same Titan style extruder with the volcano block on the bottom, which has been awesome. It also features that same RGB LED in the hot end, which kind of is a status LED, which is pretty cool. You can turn it off if you um, are printing in your bedroom or somewhere where you don't want a light. It's not um, too bright where it's annoying. I, I really like it. Um, same filament runout sensor. Mine actually came off. I need to put it back on, but uh, I did test that. It worked out really well. It's also got the power loss recovery, which is nice. Um, I didn't actually need to use that, but always nice to have as a feature. So a lot of those are the similarities between the two machines. There are a couple of differences. Um, some of them are pretty noticeable right away. Um, the main thing is, is that this machine has a lot more injection molded plastic. So this whole top bar is injection molded. Um, both the sides where the um, X gantry rides up and down the Z is now injection molded while on the artillery sidewinder, they were aluminum. This part is also injection molded, which on mine was injection molded on some of the original uh, sidewinders. They were 3D printed parts, but it is injection molded on this one. From my testing, the injection molded parts do seem like they're really well made and they're incredibly rigid. Personally, I would not have been upset if they stuck with aluminum. I, I definitely think that uh, aluminum for a 3D printer is a better option than injection molded parts. But again, this machine still for the rest of it is incredibly like over engineered, if you will, or just the, the aluminum to me is overkill. So um, again, it doesn't seem to be affecting it. It does look really nice, but of course, typically with 3D printing, like function over uh, form is my opinion on it. But the, the injection molded parts seem to be really well designed, like I said, and they do hold up really well. I didn't notice any difference really um, caused by that in print quality or any kind of slop or whiplash, but still something to be noted that there is definitely more injection molded plastic on this machine. I had one gripe with the artillery Sidewinder X1 and that was in this um, filament holding setup. Uh, on the Sidewinder X1, it's adjustable, which is awesome, but you have to remove two screws on the back using a little Allen key, which is less than ideal. When you've got your machine set up, every time you want to put a different size spool on it, you've got to either go behind the machine or turn the machine completely, which is really a pain. Um, I use all sorts of different filament with my 3D printers and there's not really one exact standard, so I do have to move that back and forth quite a bit. Well, with this one, they seem to have taken the feedback and actually, um, come up with a better solution. So one of the sides, so this side right here is actually just 
stuck in place. There's no screw holding it in place. It's just kind of like a press fit, which seems to work fine. The other side though is adjustable, but instead of having two Allen, uh, two screws you have to undo with an Allen screw or Allen key, there is just one thumb screw. So if I take this off, I can show you guys, I just unscrew the thumb screw, which loosens this, then you can slide it back and forth and then tighten it again with the thumb screw and then it is going to be locked in place. So um, this is to me a much better setup than the previous version. Um, I did mention that it was something really small that you could easily just 3D print it a better version or a different version, but I like their little um, bearing based uh, filament holder. And so to me, this was really great. It was a simple solution. Uh, I'm super happy they took feedback from, you know, whoever, I don't know that they watched my video or not, but you know, whoever they took feedback from and implemented it with the genius, I think that is fantastic. So uh, let's backtrack a little bit as far as Setup goes, the machine came really well packaged, which again is to be expected, but every once in a while I'm surprised when a machine is not packaged correctly. So packaging was great. Setup was super easy. You'll be up and running within like 10 minutes. Um, basically it's just a couple bolts holding the uh, top carriage or the top assembly to the bottom assembly. So you insert those four screws in, you slap on the um, filament holder and then plug in a couple of these ribbon cables, which Again, super simple to do. The plugs are right where they need to be, so you're just popping them in and you're up and running. One thing I didn't mention as well, similar to the uh, Sidewinder, is that it is running an AC heated bed and it is a 24 volt system, so this thing heats up super quick and the fact that it's got a smaller bed just allows it to heat up that much quicker and that is fantastic. I am really happy about that. That is, when, when I want to 3D print something and I understand that 3D printing is not necessarily super quick, but Typically when I'm doing like iterations, I want the prints to go right away so that way I can see, okay, first layer is great, I can leave it alone or whatever. So having that bed that heats up so quick is awesome. I think that anybody that gets this machine is going to love that. So let's talk about print quality. Um, you would probably expect print quality on this to be very similar to that of the Sidewinder X1 and I am very pleased to announce that that is the case. Um, print quality, I pretty much ran the same profile that I ran on the Artillery Sidewinder X1. I just scaled it down a bit and it printed beautifully. The first test I did was this insane like crystal uh, vase that I found and I actually had scaled it down a bit. And I actually wasn't even sure that this was gonna turn out. I know that on some of my printers, this would have been bumped or knocked or just turned out terrible, but I was really impressed. This is a pretty brutal retraction test with how many little things it has to bump around. Um, there is some slight stringing, but still compared to what I was expecting, this part turned out absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, this was, the first test off the machine, which in my opinion is a pretty brutal first test. After that one, I found this little Patrick tree topper, which I thought was epic and awesome. So uh, I went ahead and printed this out. Turned out absolutely phenomenal. Uh, again, it was a really good test as well. Then I wanted to do, I printed this a long time ago, this mesh skull, which is also a pretty brutal retraction test. And I thought I had enough filament, but as you can see on the top where it's white, I did not. And so I was able to test out the filament runout sensor, which as you can see here, and I'm happy to report back, worked fantastic. Um, it ran out of filament, it paused the print, it made a high, high sounding beep. Certainly will let you know no matter what room you're in in the house that your printer is hungry for filament. So that was really easy to swap out and Again, the end result was a super cool looking print. Um, I followed that up with a very detailed kind of winter wonderland print um, where it has a lot of little details, a little train here, a lot of little houses, small trees, and it did a killer job. There's even a little like spiral staircase on a castle up top and uh, it captured all of the detail. Um, so yeah, there's no doubt that this thing can print absolutely beautifully. And I did this other little, um, I think it's the bonsai tree um, kind of holder and it looks again, also absolutely awesome. So pleasantly uh, unsurprised, I suppose, that the print quality is that of the Sidewinder X1. I didn't test out flexibles on this um, or even PTG really. I just did PLA, but it's the exact same gantry setup and I pretty heavily tested flexibles and PTG on the Sidewinder X1 it's gonna be able to handle them. The direct drive setup on this is absolutely awesome. Um, I know that I've seen people adding the uh, Hamera hot end and uh, extrusion setup from E3D, which maybe I'll do in the future, but I don't know, this machine, even in its stock form, is so good um, that I don't know that I really wanna mess around with it too, too much. So, circling back around, 
If you can't tell, I, I love this machine. It's the little brother of the Sidewinder X1 packing so much of the same features. It's gonna be sitting right next to my Sidewinder. The Sidewinder, I've been running a 0.6 millimeter nozzle because I've been printing out fairly big parts uh, for my laser and it's done a great job. So having this guy next to it with just a 0.4 millimeter nozzle for some of the more smaller, higher detailed prints, I just cannot wait. Um, I, I think one of the main questions a lot of people might have is, should I get this machine or should I spend the extra $100 and get the Sidewinder X1? And it's gonna, it's gonna depend, the answer to that's gonna depend on a few things. So for one, it really is how much of a budget are you on? If you know a $300 machine is gonna be much more attainable than a $400 machine, then sure, you're not really missing out on much with this machine. Um, if you don't need the big 300 by 300 by 400 build volume of the X1, then the 220 by 220 by 250, honestly for me, is good for like, 90% of what I do. I have been printing out some bigger stuff lately and I will say having that larger bed has been really nice, but if you're limited on space or like if you're going to be building a farm and you know that the things you're printing will not be outside of that 220 by 220 X and Y, it's a great machine. And honestly, if I were to right now, I haven't, like most of the printing I've been doing has just been for testing out 3D printers as well as little projects I have here and there. But before um, I was printing and selling a lot of things I was printing online, if I was building a farm, I'd probably be decking it out with a combination of the Sidewinder X1 and the Genius for various prints. That one, the bigger one would be for, again, larger prints that need to go quicker. And this one would be for kind of mid-sized prints that uh, I want to have that higher detail on with the, just the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle. But I really don't think you can go wrong with either one. Um, I'll place links in the description to this machine as well as to my review of the Sidewinder X1 also, I'll place links to where you can uh, purchase or find out more about either of these two on like a product page. Let me know if you guys uh, have any questions at all. Um, please let me know in the comments down below if there's something I didn't cover about this machine, I will happily answer. I've been doing my best to be really good about responding to comments. So um, if you've got questions about this machine or something I did not cover, absolutely let me know and I will um, do my best to answer as quick as possible. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate all of the new subscribers that I've gotten. Uh, and if you do wanna support the channel, consider checking me out on Patreon. I've got some really cool rewards, um, some sweet stickers that uh, I had created a couple months ago. So yeah, on that note guys, this has been the Artillery Genius, um, the super awesome follow-up to the Sidewinder X1. Uh, again, these, these two machines in combination are definitely up there in my favorite machines that I've had and that I've reviewed. And I've reviewed a lot of 3D printers over the past like five years here. So um, if that doesn't say something, you know. So anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys are all doing fantastic and that the holidays have been treating you guys well. And I very much so look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. On that note, I am out. Peace, guys.